All right, so in this chapter, we're going to handle some of the lighting and post-process volume. So to light, the first thing I do is add what's called a post-process volume. I'm going to drag one of these in. Let's hit the G key so we can see it. And it's just a little volume, OK? Um, so whenever we're inside this volume, we can make certain things happen. Um, but at the moment, or for this case and purpose, I don't want this to just be uh, constrained to this volume. I want it to be infinite extent unbound. So I'm going to check that on. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll all the way up and I'm going to expand exposure. I'm going to take this min and this max and I'm going to set these both to one and one. We'll see that everything gets really dark. Uh, but what's happening is we're locking our exposure here. Um, before the exposure would kind of go down and up depending on kind of how bright or how dark the scene was. Uh, but I really want to kind of lock the exposure. And I could raise the exposure compensation to maybe two or three. I think three is maybe a good, a good exposure. OK, so now uh, I'm, I'm going to delete my lights. OK, and what I want is I want to place some lights where these uh, kind of physical lights are. OK, so I'm going to go over here to my left and I'm going to select my lights and I'm going to grab one of these rect lights. OK, and I'll hit the G key and we'll see that what this is, is this is a rectangle light. So I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees like so. And uh, I'll kind of pop this on over uh, if the snapping is kind of getting in my way at the moment, I'll check the uh, snapping box off there for movement, and then I can kind of more accurately get this thing placed. So I'm just going to try to place this in the center. Uh, I can grab the two of these, right click, visibility, show only. I'm also going to hit show and turn off my grid. And then now I can really just kind of focus on lining, lining this up. So let's drag this. To something like that. We're looking pretty squared up. Now I can take the width and I'll uh, extend, I think it's this inner box that I want extended, and then I'll shrink that. So it's like so. Okay, we'll hit Control H to unhide everything. And I've got a light here. So now with this, I can just, uh, I could turn my snap back on and hold Alt and Shift. Okay, then we could grab all these rect lights, hold Alt and Shift, bring them over. And we'll notice that we're starting to get these little red X's. I'll explain what's going on in a moment. OK, so to get rid of the red X's, uh, I'm simply going to switch this to static. OK, what it means is right now they were set to stationary, which means that they're partially dynamic and partially static, meaning that they're calculated on the fly or part of them is being calculated uh, every frame. So we don't want that. We'll switch it to static so that we don't get the little red X's, because if we have more then four of those uh, kind of too close to each other, we're going to get a really big performance hit. So uh, we're going to end up baking all these lights anyway. So we'll just set it to static. With all of these selected, I'm going to grab the intensity and bring it down to about two. Um, the attenuation radius, which is just the scale of this, I'm going to bring this in to about 500. I want it so that the scale is uh, hitting the floor, uh, but not not going too, too far. So let's actually do maybe 400. OK, uh, next I'm going to hit uh, use temperature. And to make these warm, I could type in something like 4500. To make them cool, I could type in something like 8000. Um, 
But at the moment, I think I'll just move slightly towards warm. Around 5,000 or 5,500. Okay, so we'll see a little warning saying that our lighting needs to be rebuilt. So I'll hit this build button up here, and this is going to calculate my uh, my lighting and then bake these to a texture um, called light maps. All right, not looking too bad at the moment. We do kind of not have anything out there. So let's go ahead and grab one of these. I'll alt drag one of these lights up here and just kind of place it like so. Uh, this one, I will reset its attenuation radius so it reaches more. And let's just kind of bring that maybe there. And then I'll hold Alt and Shift and get another one on the other side. So we've got some light coming from there. And we'll hit Build. All right, so next I'll grab my lights and the light fixtures, and let's all duplicate some of those out here and drag them up. Now it can help to go back into unlit mode at this point. And I want to set a lights up there. Then I'm going to alt drag. Might do a set down the center and another set uh, closer to the wall. These are going to have to have much larger attenuation radiuses. So let's grab these. And let's hit reset on the attenuation. And there we go. I don't need to build my lighting every single time. And actually, I'm just going to uh, kind of ignore that for now with the placement of my lights. But the next thing I want to do is focus on the materials. So in the next chapter, we're going to grab materials from Quixel Bridge and get them loaded into our project.